Are you tired of this happening while taming Tapahara? My name's Tekwarsa, and today I'll show you how to tame a Tapahara, and if you stick around, I'll tell you a couple of neat things about tame Tapahara. First off, let's prepare. The food you're going to need in order from most effective to least effective. Superior kibble, raw mutton, raw prime meat, raw prime fish meat, cooked lamb chop, cooked prime meat. I'd recommend using kibble or raw prime meat. It wouldn't hurt to have some cooked prime meat, just in case. You'll need around 70 narcotics per hour during the tame. At a default taming rate, a level 50 can take between 1 and 3 hours, a level 100 can take between 1 and a half and 5 hours, a level 150 between 2 and a quarter and 7 and a quarter hours. These times are the difference between kibble and raw meat. You'll also want a more abundant food source for the tapahara to consume when it wakes up. The recipe for superior kibble is 1 large egg, 2 citronelle, 2 rare mushrooms, 1 prime meat jerky, 1 sap, 5 fiber, and 1 water. Condition the area around the tapahara. Kill off any creature that could interfere with your taming. You'll want to keep an eye on the one you want to tame while you do this, and if you have tribe mates to help you, they can be defending the area while you start taming. Before we get too far into the taming methods, I do need to make a note that once the tapahara takes flight, you have a short window to take it down before it absolutely refuses to land. Ever again. Okay, that's a slight exaggeration, but it's not too far from the truth. So, taking that bit of information, let's not use it. The first way I'm going to talk about is a bit unintuitive, but can have good results. Take a mantis, statted for melee damage, equip it with a club, and pounce at the tapahara. There's a bit of a gamble here. You could either completely knock out the tapahara in the first hit, or outright kill it. If you don't knock it out in that first hit or two, it'll just fly away, never to be seen again. The next method is a bit more suited to the sensibilities of the tapahara, sneaking up on it while wearing a ghillie suit. The ghillie suit provides camouflage and will allow you to move into bola range. Once you have the tapahara bolad, you'll have a 30 second window where you'll need to hit the tapahara with as much trank ammo as you can before it can take off. You'll need to keep in mind that once the bola has been shaken off, there'll be an additional 10 seconds before you can hit the same creature with another bola. To expand on this, if you're attempting this on a higher level tapahara, you may want to consider trapping it instead of racing the clock with Trank Ammo. You'll want to have around four dinosaur gateways and two doors for them. Put them on top of the Tapahara and put doors in the first and last gate. Once the tapahara is inside, you can knock it out at your leisure. For this next method, you'll not only want to make a birdcage trap, you'll want to be extra sure that the area around the tapahara is clear. For the birdcage trap, you'll want around four wood or stone dinosaur gateways with doors on either end. Once your trap is ready, eat a rare flower near the tapahara and lure it into the birdcage. It might help if you use a bola on it before attempting to close the doors of your birdcage. Whichever way you decide to use, knock the tapahara unconscious. Put your food of choice and narcotics in its inventory and maintain its topor so it doesn't wake up until it's tamed. If this video was helpful, make sure you like and share it. Your support really helps out the channel. 
Before I get into the neat facts, I want to thank everyone for their well wishes on my last community post back in March, and I want to let everyone know that things have started to go back to normal for my family and me. However, until they get fully back to normal, I'm going to temporarily discontinue my weekly polls until such time that I feel I'm able to reliably post my taming tutorials on a weekly basis. That said, thank you again so very much for your support during this time. Now for the neat facts that I promised earlier. The Tapahara Saddle can be learned at level 55 and can be crafted in a smithy with hide, fiber, wood, and metal ingots. The saddle has two passenger seats, the occupants of which can use weapons. Tapahara also has a tech saddle, which is learned after defeating Gamma Dragon. and is crafted in the tech replicator with metal ingots, polymer, crystal, black pearls, and element. The saddle also has two passenger seats, the same as the regular saddle. With the tech saddle equipped and charged with element from the Tapahara's inventory, the melee attack button toggles the Tapahara's head cannon to activate. Now, the primary attack causes explosive energy projectiles to shoot from the Tapahara's head. The attack is semi-auto with a maximum fire rate of 2 shots per second. One element gives the saddle 25 shots. Their primary attack is a standard bite. Their secondary attack is a grab, which only works on creatures human-sized or smaller. While landed, the crouch button releases a taunting roar. While flying, the crouch button causes the Tapahara to fly directly downward, and the lay prone button causes the Tapahara to fly directly upward. The Tapahara can also hover and strafe while flying. They also have the ability to latch onto vertical surfaces or even upside down if you initiate landing while close to a wall or cliff. Tapahara eggs can be used in Superior Kibble Recipe. Two citronelle, two rare mushrooms, one prime meat jerky, one sap, five fiber, and one water. Tabahara also has an X form available on the Genesis Part 1 map. That's all I've got for today. Thank you guys so very much for watching, and have yourselves a very good day.